and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to another intake at the rescue here. For those of you who are new, hi my name is Munchie, I run my own rescue that helps out hamsters, dribbles, and mice here in the Pacific Northwest. And today's story is about a surrender intake. Now the difference from rescue Craigslist ad intakes versus surrender intakes is that the person contacted us directly asking could you please take in the animal for whatever reasons and because of this we are going to respect their privacy just because sometimes these people are just in a bad situation or it doesn't work out for various reasons but we will be at least explaining a little bit about temperament and issues in this particular instance with this specific case but the people were nothing but nice so unfortunately they were just not a aware of appropriate care because as you see here we got a 10 gallon tank with a tank topper now this is actually I think is it a KT tank topper because this is not the you and me Petco brand tank topper that I recently reviewed this is much different and is constructed much differently a lot better material and quality but the way that it clips onto the cage is very interesting and it's a lot heavier because of that too so it actually is not fun to carry around but as you can see right here it is kind of set up a little bit funky because they had to take off these parts right here and while I tried to put this back for demonstration purposes to you guys so you can visually see what the hamster was in um, I accidentally put this one that was supposed to be up here down here and I had another part which is this one that's supposed to actually go through here to connect to the upper area which that was supposed to be the upper area so it's confusing when you're like oh how are you supposed to put this in and yeah that's how I realized it plus this was actually over here and <laughs> that's where the water bottle was so you know I tried I, I definitely tried but this is a story about potato recently changed from pickle and you will know why we changed the name here in a little bit but I was contacted via our rescue that unfortunately the family could no longer take care of this hamster and they were looking to make sure this hamster went to a good home now there's actually a picture that this family did give me from the little girl because she did care a lot about the hamster and made a picture of little potato it was adorable and she asked me if I could take that with me so right now potato still has that picture on his enclosure. Now Potato was labeled as a Chinese hamster and they were informed by PetSmart where they got Potato from. They were actually told that Potato was a female and it turns out Potato is not a female. Potato is a male. So I was contacted via the rescue that this family had a Chinese hamster and they wanted to surrender that hamster to us. And I thought, wow, Chinese hamsters are actually quite rare. And she described the temperament of this hamster as being very nippy and it was hard for them to handle. And that did not sound like a Chinese hamster. Chinese hamsters are actually very docile and very easy to tame. It just takes a little bit of knowledge and time and patience, but they are one of the more relaxed hamsters. I was thinking in my head at the time, hmm, it sounds an awful lot like a Campbell's Russian Dwarf Hamster with aggression that might be territorial aggression or might just be behavioral aggression. I did not know more than that, but they gave me some information saying that she was one year old and they originally got her from PetSmart. And when I saw them in person, it was indeed not a Chinese hamster, but my speculation of a Campbell's Russian Dwarf Hamster. And this little Sheila, which they said it was a girl, was actually a guy and they themselves questioned it too saying, hmm, it seems more like a guy than a girl and they were right this is actually a male so I did not know originally until we talked in person that this hamster was from PetSmart and I asked which PetSmart they described the location of it then I said is it next to this store and then they nodded their heads and then I said okay yeah no I know this store I know the PetSmart another PetSmart hamster how many PetSmart hamsters am I going to share with you guys recently on this channel that PetSmart has done goofed and not really care too much about the animal of which they sell. How are you so severely, duh, to not realize the image that is currently on the tab that says how much they are and what they are. How could you see that this is not the same as what you're looking at here? It, it, it's not, I mean, it's so easy to tell. There's pictures for goodness sakes at PetSmart. And yet PetSmart employee had the audacity to say this was a Chinese hamster, that this was a female hamster when it was a male Campbell's Russian dwarf hamster. PetSmart, you really have some serious business to attend to when it comes to the knowledge you are giving your employees because that is just absolutely stupid right there. No wonder I see all the time people say, hey, I think my hamster's actually a guy and I was told it's a girl. Could you guys check for me? And it turns out, yeah, they're right, it's a guy. It's so easy to tell 
when they got the balls and they're dragging on the ground and they got a bigger behind you can literally see there's a curve before you see the little tail the little knob of a tail but for females it kind of is a v-shape rather than you know a curvy thing i'm just i'm just trying to show you guys visually females their behinds are more like a v males they're more curvy they got the junk in the trunk. Usually it's the opposite for us humans, but you know, no, no, no. So anyways, that's how you can kind of tell because females don't drag their, their things on the ground and males do. So we saw the little pickle and I thought at first we would keep pickle because I do like the name pickle. But when we saw the massive shape of this hamster, oh boy, it was a potato. It was definitely a spud. <laughs> Spud. He is 58 grams. Oh gosh, he is very obese. For a Campbell's Russian Dwarf, they're typically around 30 to 36 grams. They don't really exceed 40 grams, but he's 58 grams of really big hamster. And unfortunately, as you see behind me, this was his setup here. And at that time, I was going to gently tell them that this care is not actually that appropriate, but I actually had my transporter meeting me that day and she arrived a little bit early. And we actually, I, I lost my train of thought when I saw her there and I was dealing with the surrender intake and we had this nice conversation, but I completely I forgot to tell him that this care was not good care, so oh, I'm so sad. But I did try to be as friendly as possible and kind of point out a few things and show them that I'm knowledgeable and they were appreciative of that. So all good things to say. But anyways, I have a big bag here that I was trying to get up, but I have a bunch of stuff around here. But let me first show you what they have. They have, I think this is a three ounce bottle from PetSmart. We have this reptile dish for some reason from Petco. We have the oh, All Living Things Metal Tiny Wheel, which I think this is, is this a five inch wheel? This might be a five inch wheel. I know that these styles of wheels is a five inch, but this style of wheel is actually quite dangerous. So let me show you. This wheel is actually a dangerous style of wheel and people are just saying, well, why? Besides the metal grids you see here, that can cause inflammation to the pads because you're having the pads press up against something that's not solid, which can cause inflammation. That's why there's bumblefoot in hamsters. And you might hear that term often when people are like, no, 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 don't use that wheel. It's gonna cause bumblefoot. There's two different styles of metal wheels. There's one that only have one stand. And then there's this one that has two. Or if you have a hamster that has long hair, the long hair is gonna get caught when it spins and it can get ripped out and they can bleed and die in here. Oh my gosh, there's there's so many horror stories. And there was one group that identified that they done goofed up and their hamster died by this wheel and was only sharing to let people know to discard this wheel. Their hamster got stuck in here and it could be also because this can easily pop out. Let me show you, see, that could, that could pop out. You see that? But it's with those two sides that they can get caught in, that they get wrapped up in, and they're screaming. They're like, ah, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. And hamsters, they are so stress prone. And stress prone means I'm gonna get really sick here. I'm going to have raised blood pressure and a bunch of different things possibly could happen. My heart could just burst from all the stress. That, that's a hamster pretty much. If they're in a very stressful situation, they're caught, they're trapped, they can easily die from the struggle of it. It's, it's just, it's not good. These wheels are absolutely dangerous and this you should not be having. Even if you try to make this wheel solid, this standee, this right here, ends the lives of several hamsters because people are just not aware of it. If they're dangerous for your companions, you shouldn't use them. And you might be saying, well, pet stores sell them, so they should be okay, right? Pet stores like to take your money and they use things that gradually over time should have been thrown out or updated, but they kept them the same because they made the money and they really just don't care. Let's move on. This is a 10 gallon tank, by the way, in the United States, 450 square inches of floor space. This is only 200 square inches of floor space. They need horizontal space, not vertical space. They don't need to be in the clouds. But anyways, there is this dwarf size house right here. And they did have at least, I want to say, this looks to be about two inches of bedding. It's very hard to exactly tell because of the black bar right here, but this is at least two inches of bedding. Now I see hamster owners all the time just give them one inch of bedding. So at least you could still make a pile in this. Do you see this? At least hamsters can, if they want to stay comfortable, can push it. But that means this section over here doesn't have a lot. But that only means that this area over here that doesn't have that much bedding anymore, it's just gonna have a lot more stink to it because it's not being protected by the absorber, which is over here when they come to pile it up. So bedding is used to keep them comfortable, to regulate their heat, and to maintain 
a healthy, clean environment because it soaks up all the urine that has the ammonia in it. This bedding is the KT odor control bedding. That's supposed to be a lot better than their regular clean and cozy bedding. So this bedding is good to use. Dwarf hamsters don't typically smell. It's usually the Syrians with the very high ammonia, but we do have some more toys to share with you guys. We do have another food bowl, which is a lot better than the reptile food dish that I showed you earlier. We do have a 6.5 inch wheel, which is actually okay for dwarf hamsters. Hamsters. However, he's a Campbell's Russian dwarf hamster and he is massive. So he really does need an eight inch wheel. These are actually just okay for Roboroskis and some tiny mice. However, mice do have tails that will go very high. So I would actually recommend eight inch wheels for mice as well. My mice typically like the nine inch silent runners and I typically use that, but they really do like using a plethora of different wheels for mice that is. This would have been a better choice, but it looks like here they don't have the stand. And I think the whole reason why they discontinued this was was because they went from a different cage to this cage here. Or maybe what they did was they bought this and thought that they can connect it to the top. Can they? What do you know? It does fit. Let's see if it can turn. Sometimes it can't. Oh no, it's turning. Okay, so this could have actually been used inside of here like that. Next we have, why do I see this popping up everywhere? Oh, it looks good. It says it's healthy. It says it's made in the US. Yay, give it to your hamsters. No, 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 no. Oxbow is a fiber-based diet. Hamsters need protein-based. Oxbow itself makes good food for fiber-based diet animals like guinea pigs and rabbits. Unfortunately, they miss the mark on protein species like hamsters because hamsters can't absorb hay in their gut, meaning the nutrients that was originally in the hay could not be properly absorbed before it goes into the intestines and then out the other end. Meaning the analysis on here is not actually what they're getting when they absorb this food. So please guys, don't ever give a fiber-based diet to a hamster or gerbil or mouse. There is, I believe this is five inches, five inch KT, purple and i love purple but a purple exercise ball just letting you guys know running around with a dwarf hamster out in a playpen like setting is very easy and you're able to interact with them a whole lot better than if they were just rolling around in here and speaking of rolling around oh my gosh can they actually move the wheels no no they can't move the wheels wait 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 wait, wait. so you just how do you, what? You just put the hamster somehow in here? So you technically are telling me you're, you, this, this car like wheel thing, you can only push around. So you're pushing your hamster around as it's staying kind of idle inside the wheel. And if it wants to run, it will run by itself because it's being held up by this race car with a spoiler in the back. Okay, it looks like there's a tiny little hole right here. Let's try opening it like that. See, it's open now. I can stick my pinky in it. Hopefully you guys can see. Eee! And then you close it up, which this looks like it's at least a six inch wheel, maybe a five and a half, six inch wheel. And they have that type of width, which yeah, Syrians could probably fit in here, but Syrians are going to be curving. And the problem with this is that there's not a lot of ventilation here because as you guys can see, there's a bunch of punch holes, just kind of like with exercise balls where there's slits in them. So it doesn't have really good ventilation and the humidity can build up inside of it. It's only supposed to be used for a couple of minutes to have them roam around. You're not supposed to leave your hamster inside something like this for long periods of time, but at least this doesn't have slits where they can injure themselves. However, it's just, this, this is such a child thing. Hamsters don't need to be just for children. And when people use the excuse, well, this small animal is supposed to be for children. So why, why do you own it? An animal is supposed to be a companion to you and it could be a companion to anyone. Animals don't have preferences. Guess what? They don't say, oh, I have to be with a child. No, they do not. And I don't need to just be a child to enjoy the company of another. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, we're on the same page now. Woo! Because you don't know how often I can sometimes hear that from adults saying, you know, these aren't supposed to be for adults. It's just, ugh, it makes me so mad. But anyways, apparently they had that and that is completely wrong. Please don't. Free roaming play pins are so much better and that's the way to go. Oh no, I've never, oh no, yeah, it's breathing on me. It's called pet post bathing dust. Dust is really bad. It's very fine and unfortunately, they cannot handle dust because of the particles in dust. Dust is finer than sand and sand is a lot bigger chunks and it's a lot safer than dust. Dust can be used for chinchillas. It should not be used for hamsters, gerbils, or mice. And because they have such sensitive respiratories, they can actually start having respiratory symptoms, which over a while if they're constantly exposed to can build up 
to lead to cancers, tumors, and death. So it's a big, big no-no to be using something like this. And it doesn't look like they use that much. It looks like maybe it could have been filled to up here so they didn't use that much, but it's just, it's, it's too fine of a powder, all right? And oh my God, did you see that? Basically it is powder and it just, it, it disappears. That's not good. Sand doesn't disappear, so use sand because it's not gonna just poof into the air and now I'm breathing it in. Not an okay thing. Potato is in our care. Potato needs to lose a lot of weight. Potato's a beast, but potato is everybody's favorite. When I posted him on Instagram, everyone fell in love. They're like, oh my gosh, yes, I love this hamster. I can relate, oh my gosh, he is my spirit animal. So potato is a fan favorite here at the rescue already. You're gonna be seeing a lot more of that chunky potato at this rescue because he's gonna be here for a lot longer to try to get his weight down before being rehomed. For his temperament and issues, they claim that he was only nippy inside of his space, which indicates possibly territorial aggression. The Campbell's Russian dwarf hamsters are so known for this behavior because of the way they are bred at breeding mills. But when I interacted with him at the rescue here, he smelled my hand and he did not swipe at it. He did not go after it with his teeth. He literally smelled it and reclined. And he's like, okay, I'm chill. I'm just putting my, putting my nose in the air sniffing around. Oh, your hand's back in my face. Okay, I sniffed it. What What do you want me to do? Are, are you trying to tell me something here? You, you want me to tell you if you smell or not? You smell fine. Why is it still here? But I can easily scoop him up because that's what the owner said. He's able to be handled when he is being interacted with out of his enclosure, but I saw no problems with him while he was inside the enclosure. So we are just gonna observe him for now, but thank you guys so much for checking out his surrender intake story. The family was super nice and I have nothing but positive things to say. It's not always gonna be a neglectful situation. They did the right thing. They were just misinformed by the pet store and of course misinformed by PetSmart. Shame on you, PetSmart. Good gracious, PetSmart. You amaze me. You really amaze me. Oh, we care about animals. Ha, <laughs> you only care about the cats and dogs and the Banfield Pet Hospital. You're partner with oh and also your doggy daycare which has a lot of controversy all right oh and your grooming too which has a lot of controversy too it, it's just oh PetSmart look into PetSmart's backstory and history and you're gonna be appalled by it I hope you enjoyed like the video if you enjoyed it and wanted to show support comment down below with anything you would like to say about this video relevant please and please subscribe if you are new here and would like to become a part of the much good family my voice is also going out right now and I'm doing some voice and I think that's also straining my voice. So I'm gonna stop now and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic rest of your day. Good day to you now. Goodbye, so long, farewell. I need to stop now and I don't know how to stop.